Hello everyone, welcome back to Trey Your Crochet. So I am going to be teaching you the crochet head wrap pattern using the mesh stitch. I know that sounds like a lot, but this is actually a very easy pattern and for a great majority of it, you're gonna be on autopilot. So you gotta love patterns when you are on autopilot. <laughs> uh, things you will need include a size seven millimeter crochet hook, that is US, a pair of scissors, a darning weaving tapestry needle and then one skein of yarn this is Bernat stripes and it's a medium four yarn and it's specifically called beech wood stripes so that's the colorway name and yeah this is what it looks like it's a beautiful um, combination of colors in my pan so I thought it'd be really cool to make a head wrap using especially the mesh stitch Let's get started. So we're gonna start out with a slip knot. Wrap that around your finger, transfer and twist. Wrap that over and then pull that back one over that one and off your finger while lifting up on that loop that's left on your finger. Insert your hook. Remember, once again, I'm using a size seven millimeter US hook and I'm gonna chain 50 plus three, so I'm gonna chain 53 stitches. If you wanna make this wider, you can, or if you have a small head, or if maybe if it's for a child, you can chain fewer stitches, but the important thing is that it is an even number, like 50, and then you add three stitches, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, and I will meet you once I get all 50 chains crocheted. 48, 49, 50. Okay, so that's my even number 50, and now I'm going to add three more chains. And I'm gonna mark this 50th chain. So one, two, three, and three. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crochet into that, what will be the fourth chain from the hook, okay? And I'm gonna put a double crochet into that chain. So yarn over, which I've already done, go into the chain, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through two, one, two, yarn over, go through two, one, two. Now for all of the remaining chains, the remaining 49, <laughs> you're gonna put one double crochet into each chain stitch, okay? So let me do another one. And let me show you something pretty cool um, when crocheting into chain stitches. So yarn over, and here's the next chain stitch right there, right? now. Sometimes, depending on how I'm feeling, I'll just go into the chain like that, getting that one loop, right? And if I did that, then, and completed the double crochet, then it would look like that, right? But if I do it like this, so for this next chain, see right there how there's that loop, and then there's that one right there. So if I go down to the bottom of the chain, right there and get two loops on instead of just the one and then complete the double crochet then this is what it will look like okay now I don't know if your eyes can tell the difference between this one and that last one that I made compare it to that one okay this one that center one I only went into one loop and it's almost like it's not really showing the entire double crochet versus when you look at this first one that I made and then that third one, you can it's like you can see the entire double crochet all the way down to the bottom. So it doesn't matter which way you go into the chain, which one you make, but that's just something to be mindful of. If you have a preference for how your stitches look when you're crocheting into chains, then you can do it that way. Once again, you can go into one loop, 
So like this, just that top loop there, and then crochet your stitch, and it'll look just fine. I mean, that's the way that, you know, I've done it for years. Or you could do this, yarn over, and then this is the next chain right there. Kind of dig in there and go down, so you're catching the bottom of the chain. You see that? And then you look up or look at what's on top, you see two loops there. So basically, you're just kind of crocheting more of that chain stitch. See how that one, that was the one that I went into only one loop? See how the stitch seems kind of buried in there? Okay, versus the one that I just went into two loops. I went into the bottom of the chain. That stitch seems to be a little bit more forward. That's kind of just how I like to do it. So, um, yeah, just go down in there and make your double crochets. See if I can get a nice close shot. Once again, yarn over, and here's the next chain. Go down into the bottom part, leaving those two on top there and then complete your double crochet and it just looks better in my opinion all right so I'm gonna take the ones out that I did just going through one loop redo them and then I'll meet you once I've crocheted one double crochet into every chain stitch so I'll have a total of 50 double crochets see you there sorry to come on again so soon I just want to show you I think I found a good shot for you. So I'm going into this chain next. You see how there's that one and then that's the bottom part of it. So if I open it up, you can see how the two loops are at the top and that one is down there. Go in there like that and then when you look on top you'll see that the two loops are there. Okay. So once again this is the next one. If you open the chain up a little bit, just kind of spread it, you see that there are two loops on top. So just go down in there. And then you'll see the two loops on the top now. And then just complete your stitch. All right. I just want to give you a better view of that. And I did go back and take the others out and did them the preferred way. So now they're all the same. All right, I'll see you at the end of this row. Now I'm crocheting into my last chain there. Once again, going into that bottom part, so I have two loops on the top. And then I'm going to complete my double crochet. Now I'm going to chain three, one, two, three. Turn my work. And I'm going to crochet into that very first stitch. So same stitch that that chain three is coming up out of. Okay that and then I'm just gonna put one double crochet into each stitch across once again I should have a total of 50 stitches I will meet you at the end of this row all right at the end of this row so we just crocheted our double crochet into the last double crochet there. And then remember this chain three at the end? Technically it was at the beginning of that row. Don't worry about crocheting into it. The reason is because we put that extra stitch at the very beginning. So you have this chain three and then you have that double crochet there. Okay, So that means that on this end you don't need to worry about trying to squeeze a double crochet there. So now we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. And you're going to see why I'm chaining four. Normally I chain three to get us to the height of the double crochet. I know a lot of people only chain two, but I prefer three. But the reason I had you chain four instead of three is because we're about to create the gaps. So we've chained four and this first stitch right here, that's what the chain three is for that extra chain that fourth chain that we made 
is going to be hovering over this stitch, that second stitch there. And so we're going to put our next double crochet into that third stitch, okay, from the end. So let me show you, let me crochet this double crochet, and then you'll be able to clearly see, okay. So that created a gap. Chain three, and then there's that chain one that is hovering over that one, which we skipped. And then we put our double crochet in that third one. So one, two, three, over. And so that's going to be the pattern. After every double crochet, you chain one. And then down here, we skip a stitch. So we don't crochet into that. We go into this stitch. And that's where we put our next double crochet. Chain one. Skip this stitch, crochet into that one like that. After the double crochet, chain one, skip this next stitch and go into that one. Let me show you what happens if you forget to chain one. So say I forget to chain one now and then I say okay skip that stitch and go into that one. Oh, right there that should, when you see that you should say okay there's no spacing in between those two double crochets, so I forgot to chain one. So if you start to think about something else that may happen to you, and hopefully you'll catch yourself, <laughs> uh, chain one and then go into, after skipping that one, go into the next one. And complete your double crochet. Okay? So this is how you create one type of mesh stitch is going to be the type of mesh crochet stitch in this tutorial. So you're just going to continue on across your row, chaining one after every double crochet and skipping a stitch and putting your next double crochet in the one thereafter. I will meet you at the end of this row. Now that we're almost done with this row, we're almost at the end. I did my double crochet. I chained one there. and. You have two stitches left. You have this one and then you have this chain three. So we skip that regular double crochet and we put our final double crochet into the top chain, that chain three. Okay? And this is what it should look like. Okay? This row that we just completed, that's what you're going to be doing for 19 more rows. If you want to make your project longer, you can. That may require more yarn. Just be mindful of that. But yeah, I want you to crochet 19 more rows just like this. So let me show you how to do it. So remember chain one, two, three. That's the height of the double crochet. Or you can chain two if you prefer two, but I prefer three. And then the fourth one is that extra chain because that's going to be that's going to allow for the spacing. Okay, turn your work. So we chain three and then we chain that fourth one to create that gap. And then we don't need to skip any stitches now because we've already done it. So all we need to do is crochet into every double crochet below. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. Here's the next double crochet. So we just go into the top of it like that. Put a double crochet there. Okay, and creates that gap. Chain one. Go into the next double crochet, which is there. Chain one. Go into the next double crochet, which is there. Chain one. The next double crochet is there. Yarn over, go into the stitch, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. I know some of you guys probably missed hearing me say that. <laughs> Chain one, find the next double crochet right there. Okay, I yarned over already, go into the top of the stitch, yarn over, pull through to the front, three loops, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay, and so on. Now you will see some mesh crochet patterns where they put the double crochets in the chain one spaces so that they're staggered but for this one I made it such that you're gonna have a line okay of double crochet so that means you're gonna actually crochet into the tops of each double crochet of the row below 
okay so you're just going to continue doing this and you should have a total of 20 mesh rows okay once again putting one double crochet into every double crochet of the row below and don't forget that chain one if you forget the chain one your double crochets are going to be bunched together and you're not going to have the spacing that you need to really capture that mesh look okay so I'm going to meet you at the end of this row just to show you how to start one more row of this mesh stitch and then I will let you go on autopilot so I'm almost done with this row a couple more yarn over go into the double crochet the top of it yarn over pull through to the front yarn over go through two yarn over go through two chain one and then this is since this is the first row of mesh remember we chained four here so instead of going into the top stitch which would be that fourth chain we don't want to do that we want that fourth chain to be the spacing right so instead of going into that top chain we're going to go to the second from the top chain which is the third chain up okay so one two three that chain that's where we're going to put our double crochet so go into that third chain up yarn over go through two yarn over go through two and then when you go into that third chain instead of the fourth it leaves that there open and it creates the appropriate spacing chain one two three four turn your work yarn over go into the double crochet the next one which is there yarn over go through two yarn over go through two chain one go into the next double crochet which is there yarn over go through two yarn over go through two chain one go into the next double crochet which is there yarn over go through two yarn over go through two chain one and so on so you're gonna see that this is gonna work up really really fast okay once again you're just putting one double crochet in every double crochet of the row below and you're not forgetting to chain one in between the double crochets because that is what's going to create the spacing and then also remember now that you've started chaining four on the ends don't go into the topmost chain go into the third chain up so that that one chain that fourth chain is left there to create the spacing that you want all right all right so i will meet you at the end of your 20th row or if you decide to go longer i'll meet you once you're done with all of your mesh rows have fun all right you guys so this is what it is looking like so far and i have 20 rows of this mesh pattern i'm at the end of the row there so i hope you guys have been putting that final stitch in the third chain up on the edges okay leaving that one chain or that chain one to create the spacing all right all right let's move on and oh yeah one more thing like i said before you can if you want yours to be longer you can feel free to crochet more rows it all depends on how long your hair is you know some people are wearing long locks and want the majority of them covered while others have shorter hair or plan on wearing it up and a bun or something so it doesn't need to be as long this material by the way this uh, yarn is pretty stretchy too so take that into consideration as well all right let's move on so I'm at the end of row 20 and I'm going to chain three this time because I don't need that extra chain that fourth chain to create a space I only need to get up to the height of the double crochet turn my work and now I'm going to be filling in everything solid again so you'll see what I mean this chain three is for that double crochet there now we have this chain one space we're gonna put a double crochet into that chain one space like that okay now we have this double crochet so we're gonna crochet into the top of it like normal notice I'm not chaining one in between stitches remember we don't need a space in between the stitches anymore so I didn't need to chain four here I only needed the chain three 
and then I did not chain one in between the double crochets because once again there's no space the stitches should be right next to each other all right so once again for this chain one space just yarn over go into kind of up under that viaduct or bridge whatever you want to call it yarn over pull to the front yarn over go through two yarn over go through two now we have the double crochet so we can crochet into the stitch so basically when there's a stitch crochet into it when there's just a chain one space crochet up under and around it like so okay so keep doing this and I will meet you at the end of this row I'm at the end here and don't forget that these chains right here that's from a mesh stitch row so there are four chains so don't forget to crochet into the third chain up one two three which is there leaving that fourth chain as the space there okay right there okay and this is what it looks like so you've crocheted into every single double crochet you've also crocheted in between the double crochets so it kind of fills it out solid again let's chain three one two three turn our work so once again this chain three counts for this stitch for this one we're going to do a front post double crochet so yarn over come from the front to the back and back out to the front like that okay yarn over pull through out to the front you have three loops yarn over go through two one two yarn over go through two one two and you guys are thinking this of course would it be happening right when the yarn is dark right <laughs> or I guess a better way to say that we would be doing the stitch when the yarn is turning dark um, but it's okay all right and now the next stitch is this one so we're gonna put a back post double crochet in that one so we're gonna yarn over come from the back so we yarned over this is the stitch right here come from the back out to the front just on that side now go around it and back out to the back yarn over and just pull it through like that we have three loops again yarn over go through two yarn over go through two all right and we're going to alternate now between the front post and the back post so you can see this front post double crochet is posted on the front of that stitch whereas this back post double crochet is posted along the back of this stitch right there okay hence the names front post and back post all right so this chain three for that one, this front post for that one, this back post for that one. This right here is the next stitch. And because we just did a back post double crochet, it's time to do a front post again. So yarn over, come from the front to the back, back out to the front. Now yarn over, pull through. We have three loops. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Now it's time for a back post. Yarn over, come from the back out along the side of the stitch we're working with, which is that one. Now go around it and back out to the back. So that's what it's going to look like on the back before you yarn over. Yarn over, pull through three loops. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two front post yarn over come from the front behind it and back out to the front on the other side of it yarn over pull through three loops yarn over go through two yarn over go through two yarn over back post from the back come out on the side of the stitch which is there go around it 
and go back just on the other side of that stitch. Okay, yarn over, pull through the way you came. Let me get three loops on your crochet hook. Yarn over, go through two. Yarn over, go through two. Front posts. Try to give you a different angle. So we yarn over, go from the front out to the back. Then we're going to go around it and back out to the front. Now we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull it through. Leaving three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Back post, yarn over, from the back, going out to the front, and then we're going around it and back to the back, if you will, just on the other side of the stitch. Now we're going to yarn over and we're going to pull through, leaving three loops on our crochet hook. Yarn over, go through two, yarn over, go through two. Okay? So you're just alternating between front post, back post. I hope those different angles helped. I know some people have trouble with this, so I just tried to give you as many different angles as possible to hopefully help you. Let me know if you guys need me to do a separate video showing the front post and back post, okay? And then when you get good at it, you won't have to really think about it too much. You'll just do it. You actually won't even have to rotate your work. You'll just know exactly where to go. See how I'm not rotating my work? I'm just inserting the hook where it needs to go. You guys will get like that as well. Okay? So just continue alternating front post, back post, and I'll meet you at the end of this row. So this is what it should look like when you have alternated between the front post and the back post. And because of the yarn and how it changes colors, it really leaves a very cool effect. All right, so I'm down to this chain three now. How do I know this is a chain three instead of a chain four? Well, because this was a solid row, this wasn't a mesh row. This was the last mesh row there, right? But this row was solid, so I know that I only chained three. And I did a back post, double crochet. You can tell because it's in the back. So I'm gonna do a front post here. Just hook it up on the chain three. All right, chain three, one, two, three. Turn your work. And this time, we're still gonna be alternating stitches, but we are going to be matching the stitches of the row below. So from this perspective, even though on this row, you know, technically it was a back post, double crochet is in the back, right? But when we turn, our, turn it around, it's in the front. So we're gonna treat this like a front post double crochet. And because this is a front post double crochet, that's the stitch that we're gonna do for this row. So we're gonna match it. So this is a front post double crochet from this perspective. So we're gonna make a front post double crochet. And that chain three, by the way, that we made beginning this row, that took care of the last post stitch that we made of the previous row, okay? So now we're on to the third stitch. Once again, if you turn it around this way, this was a front post on this side. But from this perspective, it looks like a back post. So we're gonna make a back post, okay? So don't let it scare you because it's in the back. Just find the stitch, it's right here. Come from the back around back out to the back yarn over pull through three loops yarn over go through two yarn over go through two it's the same old thing okay so when it comes to matching these stitches just pay attention to what it looks like from this perspective this is in the front so we're going to treat this like a front post double crochet it is a front post double crochet from our perspective okay so that means we make a front post double crochet Technically, you don't really need to 
try to figure out what you're doing now you should be able to just alternate between the stitches meaning you did a front post here so you did a back post there you did a front post here so the next stitch should be a back post the next stitch should be a front post the next stitch should be a back post and so on okay so you really shouldn't have to think too hard this is of course assuming that you didn't make any mistakes in the previous row you actually successfully alternated every stitch between the front post double crochet and the back post double crochet okay let me do just a couple of more try to get a little bit closer now so the next one that's in the back so I'm gonna do a back post double crochet once again this is the stitch right here so I'm gonna come from the back and go on the side of it coming out like that go around it like I always do back out to the back now I'm gonna yarn over pull that through that'll leave three loops on my crochet hook yarn over go through two yarn over go through two I already know the next one is a front post because this was a back post but if I need further confirmation this is posted on the front so that tells me yeah that confirms that I need to do a front post double crochet next so from the front to the back back out to the front yarn over pull through three loops yarn over go through two yarn over go through two yarn over go through two <laughs> and you see it continues a line so front posts and the back posts okay so just continue like this alternating once again between the front post and the back post matching the stitches of the row below from our current perspective and I'll see you at the end of this row all right, we're almost at the end of this row. The next stitch is a back post, and that back post stitch is hiding back there. But it can't hide from me, because I know where to look for it. All right, and then we're here at this chain three on this edge now. And because I just did a back post, we're gonna treat it as a front post. Which is basically it just being a regular double crochet right <laughs> there's nothing else to really go around or to hang on to so yeah anyway moving on <laughs> chain three one two three turn your work and we're going to do one more row of this alternating front post with back post okay so as before this chain three will take care of that first stitch there this stitch from this perspective it's a front post so we're gonna make a front post on it and the next stitch which is back there that's a back post from our perspective so we're gonna put a back post on it and when I say a back post I mean a back post double crochet okay this is a front post so we're gonna put a front post double crochet on it and then that one right there it's a back post so we're gonna put a back post double crochet on it okay so just continue alternating once again between front post back posts and I'll meet you at the end of this row all right once again we're almost at the end of this row got a back post hiding back there so we're gonna do a back post double crochet I'm trying to angle this so you guys can clearly see what I'm doing coming from the back around back out yarning over pulling through three loops yarn over go through two yarn over go through two can I just say I love this caramel color <laughs> ah it's so beautiful all right and then the last one a front post or just treat it basically as a regular double crochet okay so this is what it should look like now and we're done with that part so we're gonna chain one we're going to cut and then you might as well weave this in now so that you have fewer strands to do later so just keep that darning tapestry weaving needle close by so you can just take care of it so yeah just go through some stitches try to go in the stitches of the same color as the yarn that you're weaving through it'll help to conceal that even more And then as you're pulling this through, gotta figure out which end is the tail. Is it that one? 
Nope. Okay, so it's this one. Then kind of pull the actual work, like hold it, you know, so it stretches back out to its normal shape. And then we're going to go back. Because you came out right there, go back a little bit, and that's where you want to insert your needle. Okay, you don't want to go back in there, that's just going to undo it, right? Just a little trick. All right, pull that through. Once again, stretch it back out to its normal shape, and then you can cut that off. Alrighty. By the way, we did not necessarily have to weave that in because we're gonna crochet around this, you'll see. So we could have crocheted over it, but it just makes it look a little bit neater to me. All right, so now we're going to create our drawstring. And basically it's just gonna be a series of chains, nothing special. You wanna crochet at least 150 chains, especially since we're working with this medium four yarn, okay? Obviously the draw string length is once again personal. You know, it's a matter of personal preference. Just like the length of this is a matter of personal preference. So if you want it shorter, you should do 150. If you want it longer, obviously do more chains. But I think 150 is a decent length. So just grab the yarn that you just cut you guys know how to make a slip knot. We did it earlier. Search your hook. And now just get to chaining. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Like I said, I'm going to do 150 at least. So I'm going to meet you once I finish crocheting all of my chains. All right, so I ended up doing 200 <laughs> chains all there. And I've just crocheted, like I said, the 200th. So I'm gonna chain one more, cut my yarn, and then pull on like that. So I actually have 200 chains. It doesn't really matter. I'm just being super technical right now. <laughs> Alrighty, so now that we have our drawstring, this is the part where we have to line up our drawstring with the body of this mesh head wrap, if you will. Okay. So basically, we're going to have this be up there, we're gonna lay it up there like that. And then along the sides, like that. And it's gonna be on either side. Okay, like that. And basically we're gonna crochet around this. So the drawstring will essentially be attached to the head wrap. Now, in terms of where to start crocheting, here are your mesh rows. This is the first mesh row. I think it depends, once again, this is personal preference, but I kind of like to start maybe one, two, three, four on that fourth row, that fourth mesh row up, okay? That's where I'm gonna start. All right, so pay attention to that, so count four mesh rows up, and that's where we're going to insert our hook and start crocheting around this, okay? I'll meet you there. Okay, so once again, this is the first mesh row, second, third, fourth, that's where I wanna start. So my hook is gonna go in there like that. It's not going into any stitch, it's just going in the hole. And I'm laying the chain my drawstring on top, okay? Now I'm gonna grab that same yarn that I've been snipping and reusing, and I'm gonna hook it onto my crochet hook, like that. 
and I'm going to hold it with my other finger. Now I'm going to pull my crochet hook forward like this and then I'm going to hold that short tail right there with those fingers and then I'm just going to make a chain right quick. Really quick just to kind of secure it even though it's not really all that secure because it's still loose there so if I were to pull this would just come on out right there okay but it's okay because what you can do is just tie a little knot now with the part that's coming from the skein so let's do that and as always you guys know when I say tie a knot that means a minimum of two so here's the second knot <laughs> There we go. Okay. Now we are going to be making half double crochets. Okay. So we just chained one to secure it. We have our drawstring, which is there. We're going to crochet essentially over the drawstring. And that's how it's going to become attached to the mesh stitch head wrap. Also, this tail, right, we can crochet over that as well. We might as well so we don't have to worry about weaving it in later. All right, so I'm going to roughly put two half double crochets in each of these spaces. So I'm going to slide that back a little bit so I have enough room to get two half double crochets in there. Okay, so let's begin. Remember with the half double crochet, you yarn over. All right, and we're going to go into that same opening. Yarn over, bring it through to the front, and we're going to have three loops, just like with the double crochet. And then when we yarn over, instead of going through two, we're going to go through all three loops. So that's one. Okay, yarn over. Let's make another one. Remember, we're going to put two of them in each of these spaces. And you want to keep it kind of loose so that your drawstring, as you tug on it, can have a little room to slide through these half double crochets that we're making, okay? All right, we're gonna go to the next space. So we'll skip this little part right there and we'll go to this next space and put two half double crochets there. Remember to crochet over that tail as well as this drawstring. And remember to make it kind of loose so that, like I said, the drawstring can move. Three loops, yarn over, go through everything, all three. Yarn over, we get another one in here. So go in that space, pull through to the front. Three loops, yarn over, go through everything. Okay? So we're just going to continue doing this working our way around okay there's one another one goes in there there's two next is that space so we're gonna put one and then another one we're almost done with that tail nice two all right this is the next space put one half double crochet and then the second half double crochet I'm keeping it loose here's the next space one half double crochet the second half double crochet keeping it loose so this is what it's going to look like and this is where the drawstring comes out right here okay okay so just keep crocheting over your drawstring and I'm going to meet you once we get to this corner right here. All right, so I just finished putting two half double crochets in that final mesh row, which is there, that 20th row. So now we're at the solid rows, but it makes no difference. We're still going to crochet along the edge. So this is the first edge, just kind of split that from the next stitch and just crochet in there like that. Remember, don't forget to crochet loosely around your drawstring. And we're still going to put two half double crochets in there like that. 
Here's the next one, right there. Two half double crochets around your drawstring. Okay. All right. Let's see. This right here is the next one. So just lay that half. Um, just lay that drawstring up there. And two half double crochets. All right, now this is technically the final one right here. So because it's a corner, we're going to put three half double crochets. So one, nice and loose, two, and then one more in that same hole. That kind of gets us around the corner. All right, now that we are working on the top of these stitches, we're just going to go into the tops of the stitches like normal, but still crocheting half double crochets and still crocheting them loosely around the drawstring. So for instance, this is the first stitch, this front post right here. So we'll go, we'll yarn over, and then we'll go on the top of the stitch like normal. Okay, just lay the drawstring on top, now yarn over, pull out, and then yarn over and go through everything. Okay. The next stitch is that back post double crochet, so go on the top of it, yarn over first, I keep forgetting to do that, I'm so focus on the drawstring, okay? So that, lay the drawstring on top, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through everything. So now we're just putting one half double crochet into every stitch. This front post going, yarn over. <laughs> Go to the top, now lay the drawstring on top, yarn over, pull through to the front loosely, yarn over, go through everything. Yarn over, I remember that time. <laughs> That's the back post double crochet, go into the top, lay the drawstring on top, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through all three. Here's the front post, yarn over, go into the top of it, Lay the drawstring on top, yarn over, pull through to the front, yarn over, go through everything. Okay? So look how beautiful that is. And those three half double crochets got me around the corner. Alright, so just keep doing this and I'll meet you at the other corner. At the very next corner, in fact. So I'm still crocheting in the tops of the stitches. This is the back post there, so I'm going in the top of the stitch and I'm laying my drawstring on top, yarning over, pulling through to the front, and putting my double crochet, or I'm sorry, my half double crochet into it. Alrighty, because this is the final stitch of that row, this is where I'm going to put my three half double crochets. So I'm just going to go back in there and create two more. That's the second one. I'm still crocheting over the drawstring, you guys, and that's the third one. And see how it curves around very nicely for me. All right, and now we're in these solid rows, but once again, it makes no difference because we're still just crocheting along the edge. So two half double crochets for every row. So two went in there. Now we're in this row. Two will go in there as I loosely crochet these half double crochets around my drawstring. Two will go in there, one back in there, two, ah I love that. Alright continuing on, two goes in here. This is the last solid row meaning it's not a mesh row. Alright and now I'm back to the mesh rows. So as you might be thinking, I'm going to crochet all the way down to that fourth mesh row on this edge now, okay? I want it to be symmetrical. And this is one reason why I made my drawstring so long. I wanted it to kind of hang out as I wrapped it around the perimeter and I'm now crocheting over it. I wanted it to be long enough so that it would hang out on either side. 
Okay. So just keep going, putting two half double crochets in each at the end of each row. And you might want to pay attention to what that fourth row up is going to be. So one, two, three, four. So I notice that it's two rows in that color and then it gets dark. So I'll complete that one and then this will be the last one. So one, two, three, four. And that will match up with this one over here which was also one, two, three, four. Okay. All right, you guys. So just continue crocheting over your drawstring on this edge and I will meet you once we get down to that fourth mesh row right there. All right, I'm here. I'm at the fourth one. One, two, three, four. So I know I have to put two half double crochets in there. So crocheting over the drawstring and that's going to end it. So now I'm going to chain one, cut my yarn fast enough, and I'm going to hide that tail. I won't be crocheting over this because I don't have anything else to crochet. <laughs> so once again, just kind of hide it in the same color. And be careful because you don't want to accidentally go through your drawstring. If you do, when you start pulling in your drawstring, it's gonna snag and catch, right? Because you're going through it. So make sure you're not weaving this yarn through the drawstring. And it helps that this yarn is dark brown and the drawstring, at least at this point, is uh, that beautiful caramel color so easy to identify and therefore avoid let's just pull it through like that okay let's see how it, my drawstring pulls just fine all right and now I can cut this be sure not to cut your work all right guys so this is what we have and don't forget to weave in this tail at the very beginning when we first started the project that needs to be woven in um, but yeah this is what we have here's the drawstring on one side that's where we started and here's the drawstring on the other side that's where it would end it and the drawstring is going all around this as you can see okay so you might be wondering how is this gonna work how is this gonna fit on my head it's like a square basically <laughs> well you just wrap it around your head like, you know, the perimeter of your head. And then you start to pull on the drawstrings and it's going to close up not only on the front, but also on the sides down to that point right there on either side. So it's going to look very nice. But yeah, just put it on your head and pull the drawstring and it'll start to fit more snugly around your head. And you can tie the drawstrings to kind of hold it in place if you want or you can just let them hang so hopefully you guys have enjoyed this tutorial i hope you love this head wrap using the mesh crochet stitch to the subscriber who requested this i hope you like it let me know when you make yours all right guys that is it for this video i will definitely see you in the next one in the meantime happy crocheting